All right, so today we're going to set up Perforce integration. We're going to start off by creating a new project. You could also use an existing project, so we can have something to hook source control into. Let's just save it and close it. Now we need to download a few different things. We need the visual client, the command line, and the actual server itself. So download all three of those. First install the Helix Core server. I'm going to install it to my eDrive. You can change the port number if you need to, but 1666 is probably fine. Put in a username. All of it gets changed later anyway, so it doesn't quite matter. It'll give you the actual server name for the local host. Install the core apps. And install the command line. If we open up services here, we'll see that Perforce is currently running a service. Open up the command line. We need to set up Perforce to actually handle the files that every engine uses. So type in P4 type map and copy this into the type map file. Save it and close it. And the command line window will reflect that it's been saved. Let's open up P4V, which is the interface for actually logging into Perforce. You're going to want to input the server name, input a username. You can't just use the one that's there. It's a placeholder, so you actually have to create a new one. Give a username, a name, a password, and an email address. In here we have our file depot and we have our workspace. We need to create a new workspace, name it whatever you want to, and put it wherever you want to. I'm going to put it in a new folder called workspace. After you're done with this, you'll be asked to add files to the actual server. We're going to add our project to the server. So we'll go to where our project is saved. We can we can choose individual folders, like a config file folder, the content folder, whatever, but we're going to use the entire root directory. We're going to use a classic depot. It'll show our file size and it'll add everything to the server. If we look in here, we can see all the files from the server. And if we open up File Explorer, we can actually see inside the Perforce folder the actual server itself, where all the files are located. Now if we go to our workspace and actually open up the project, we'll be able to connect to Source Control. So click on Source Control, connect to Source Control, go to Perforce, type in your server name and your username, and it should populate with the workspaces available. If this is a local server, it's going to be the port name Otherwise, it's going to be the actual name of the computer. Now we're connected to source control. Let's make a new asset. We'll call it a new BP, just so we can show some changes. You're going to get a little question mark. You now need to add this file to the source control. And then you want to submit the changes, add in a change log, and submit. Now if we try to save this map without checking it out, it'll actually warn us we have to check the file out first. We check it out, save it, put in a new change log, and then it'll let us save it and check it back in. We also have the option to keep the file checked out. Now if we close Unreal Engine and go back to the server, we'll be able to see our files populated inside the server. We can see right here, a new BP has been added to the server. We go to the workspace, it is also there. We can see any pending change logs, as well as any successfully added changes inside of P4V. Here we can see a list of all the changes that have been made inside the server and what they did. That's pretty much it for a simple setup of Perforce for Unreal Engine. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.